Hello there, year four. It is Mr. Shepard here, and I am here to talk you through your computing lesson for week three. Now, every single week, I will be creating for you a short video just to help you be able to get onto Purple Mash and use the resources there to complete your current spring one computing unit. Now, your first unit, year four, is a pretty good one. You're going to be looking at how you can write for different audiences using online software, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now, if you have not yet been able to get onto Purple Mash, you need to make sure that you've got your logins available, contact the school or your teachers through your virtual lessons to make sure that you can get on and see the learning that you should be completing. If you have any problems with that, do make sure you contact the school and we can help you as well. Now, with this video and the way they work, you might want to pause me and complete some of the steps as you go along. You might want to rewind me. You might want to listen to some bits again. That's absolutely fine. Take a pause, take a break, have a go, and then come back if you need any support or extra ideas. Right, we're gonna jump straight into how we can use some of the Purple Mash software today. Now, I'm just gonna move my screen. I'm sorry that on yours, it might look a little bit backwards, but there's some key vocabulary that we'll be using today that I wanna make sure that you are aware of. Now, you probably will have heard some of this language before. When we use online software to type and to use different types of font. Now, font is the first word. Now, that is the way that our letters look. Now, there are lots of different fonts. Some are incredibly fancy, some are more simple and straightforward. Choosing the correct font, the correct type of uh, um, text that you are creating is a really important step. So you can change the font and that's the style. It will not change the letters. It will still be a A or a B or a C, but it may look slightly different. We can also change in, as well as the font, whether it is bold, bold, italic, or underlined. And these can have impact on the person you were talking to as well. Making something more bold will make it appear clearer for the audience. Making something italic will make it slanted. Now, this is often used for emphasis. That's a really key word. So that we stress the word. So if you want to stress a word, you might use italics. And finally, to underline. That's where there's a really important part of information or a title that you want to really put forward. Now, in your Purple Mash learning today, you are going to be using those different pieces of software. And that's what I want to see that you are getting on and using today. Now, I'm going to share my screen with you a little bit, and I'm going to share with you the different text types that you can look at. So, on Purple Mash, I have put together this little diagram showing you the different types of text that we can write for. Now, no, it's not very clear on the back there, so I'm actually going to share my screen now, and I'm going to share this with you just to make sure that you can see this really clearly on your screens. So once you've got onto Purple Mesh, what you should now be doing is, if you just watch what I'm going to talk you through now, you'll be able to see everything that we're looking at and how we are using that information. So the key thing that you've got here is writing for different audiences and test text types. So Looking through, I hope you can see my screen now, the first type of textbooks that you can think about is picture books. So picture books can have lots of information, including um, uh, bold areas, or it might have an underlying title, or it might have, especially those italics for emphasis. That is one type of text that you can look at. Another is a newspaper, and this is one we're gonna be looking at in a bit of detail today. A newspaper can use lots of bold, italic or underlined fonts to really bring that news to life because we want to this topic is all about writing for an audience and a newspaper is trying to grab an audience it's trying to really engage with someone and make sure that they are linked and involved then you've got a formal letter now in a formal letter you might be making a complaint or you might be wanting to persuade and therefore stressing your point through the use of emphasis or bold can really make sure that those things come across so a formal letter is another type of text where you might use these features and then of course a poster another great example of how you might use fonts in terms of bold you might change the font in different sections if it's a historical film or a historical poster or if it's an art poster you might use fonts that help accentuate those features and then of course a text message now in text messages you might underline things they come through you might make things bold you might put things into italics as well just to stress with your friends how you're putting things across so those are the different types of uh, text that we can use in computing in terms of to make things bolder or to make things italic or underlined. Now, in your to-dos, you will find that you have got a set to-do. Now, I've got one for me to do as well, just to share with you as well. Mine is here, I've got a really bland newspaper that I'm gonna try and make more appropriate for my audience. So if I click OK here, I can see that I've got one of my uh, text softwares in Purple Mash 
and I've got a news story. I'm just going to read this to you. So I've got here my the name of my newspaper. It's called The Weekly News. I've got the date here, which is the 16th of February 2016. Or I might want to update that with a more recent one. I can click on it there, and I can then update that with perhaps obviously today's date. So I might put in something like the 11th of January. Capital letter for my January, as it is the name of a place. And 2020, we are four years in the future, or 21, five years in the future from when this was created. I can then see I've got an image here and I've got a caption alongside that. Remember this from your newspaper features. And I've got my headline here, school dramatically shut down. I'm sure we can all uh, uh, understand what that must be like. We've got a picture of the head teacher here. I'm now going to read to you what it says. So it says, Perthman Mash College in Hendon has been dramatically and suddenly shut down by inspectors after it was discovered that the head teacher and several other members of staff were actually aliens from the planet Purple. Parents became suspicious, suspicious during parents' evening when several teachers appeared to grow purple tentacles over the course of the night. Children had complained for a while at the school dinners, which were said to consist of only beetroot, aubergine, purple sprouting broccoli and black currant jelly. They had also noticed the uniform appeared to be designed with what looked like tall, uh, tail holes and four arms. Quite an interesting newspaper so that you can see why this is made at the news. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to look at what you've got here and I want to see if you can improve upon it by changing the font, by looking at what's in bold and what is in italics and what could be used in terms of underlined. Now, the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to look at my uh, headline here. I don't think my headline is particularly big or and I think it could actually definitely use a bit more learning, a bit more work. So if I go onto here, I've got the font window here where I can show what I can do in terms of my font, in terms of making it bolder. That's what this B means here. Italic. That's what this means here. Underlined. These buttons here allow me to align the text either to the left hand side, the center, the right hand side, or justify. Now, I use that in my newsletters every week to make sure that all of the paragraphs seem clear and across. I can also use bullet points. I can also use numbers. And here is where I can change my font size. Here is where I can change my font uh, family. And here is where I can change the color. And I can add in some extra elements to the background just to make it really come alive. Now, I am going to let you have a really good play with some of these features when you get onto your newspaper article. But I'm just going to give you a few bits of information to make sure you can have a go at this. So if I'm looking at here, I like school dramatically shut down exclamation mark. I think it's an exciting headline, but I can change my font size here by making it bigger. So I've highlighted the text and I'm going to make it, oh, let's try a six there for 32 points. Oh, that's better. It now really fills the box there. That seems much better. I might try one more and see if I make it a bit bigger, whether that will still work or would that be too big? Let's have a little look. Let's try seven. Oh, I see it now. Six is as high as it will go for me because otherwise it won't fit into that particular box. So now we don't want to make it hard to read. We want the title to be really clear and easy. So I might want to keep the headline exactly the same as I've got it here. Or I might want to see if there is another font that looks bolder or clearer. I could come across down here to maybe impact. Maybe that would be the best one, would be a good one to move to. Oh, there we go. That's really bold. Now, you might notice as well that all my information here is on the left hand side. If I highlight it again by clicking and dragging across my cursor, I can make it centralized here by aligning it in the middle of that, even underline it. Click that, and now I have an underline on my particular headline. Okay. Now, going into my text here, again, I want to fill this page here. So I'm going to drag and make all of this bigger, and I'm going to make my font size and my headline. So I'm going to maybe have a look at changing it to four there with 18 points. Oh, that looks better. That's a lot larger. That's a lot more clearer for my people reading my newspaper to see. I'm now going to look. Can you see, I don't like the way it's all across on the left hand side aligning the I'm going to make it justified across so it fills the entire of the columns that looks much better now i still got quite a lot of information here and i think after this first section here i am going to make sure it's a really clear paragraph break down here into my next paragraph by just clicking on enter and making that come across into this new area i'm now going to look and see as i read through it if i think there's anything in here that could be in bold just to make it stand out or anything i think i need to stress in a bit more detail so, for example, I am going to put in here, Purple Mash College in Hendon has been dramatically and suddenly shut. I am going to change dramatically italics and suddenly to italics, just to really stress those two words. So now it reads like this, Purple Mash College in Hendon has been dramatically and suddenly shut by inspectors after it discovered that the head teacher and several other members of staff were actually aliens from the planet Purple. That word aliens, I'm gonna put in bold because that is a really important part of the story. And if I just put it into bold, it might grab the reader and they might go, aliens, gosh, I'm gonna read about this. This school shut down, something to do with aliens, that's really intriguing. And I'm gonna add that element there. 
Now across here, I've got my caption. Now I think my caption should be quite small compared to the rest of the picture, but I can definitely do more. So I might put just the font a little bit bigger and see if that makes it a bit clearer. There it is. I think that's good and I think that's gonna be fine. And what the last thing I do is this top bit here, this is the title of the entire newspaper, it's really boring. So this is the bit you can have lots of fun with. You can really have a look at the font, you can have a look at the color. I'm gonna make it a lot bigger just to start off with. And I'm gonna change the color straight away just to make it stand out a little bit. So I'm gonna make it HGA colors, I'm gonna make it a nice uh, red there, and I'm gonna make it in bold. I'm also, as it's the title, I can be a bit freer with the capital letters. I'm gonna make that the capital letter there, the weekly and capital letter news there. I might even create a background for this one here by going to here, change the background color, and I might put it in um, Harris Gower blue. There we go. You see now I've got, that's gonna stand out a lot better. There are lots of other features you can use on here. Up in the top right hand corner, I can add extra images from our particular different bank, bank here of clip art. You can go into the classroom. You can have a look in lots of different areas here as well to add to your particular piece of work. Now that's my piece of work. That's my piece of learning. You, my lovies, when you log in, will find that you have got this one here. You are gonna make this bland newspaper more appropriate. This is one that you'll be looking at. So here you have got one about a huge meteor passing the earth and it's been split into different sections for you to add information to. You can also add an image in this top left hand corner. And as I did include and I update the headline, update the top bit there and the rest of the newspaper article with whatever you like. Now, once you've completed this, if you click on this top right hand corner here, you can save your piece of work and then hand it in to your teacher so they can see what you've been up to in your Purple Mash Learning this week. There will also be a short quiz at the end that you can complete that set us a to-do just to check that you understand some of the vocabulary we've looked at today. I am gonna stop sharing my screen now. So year four, I want you to have a really good go at how you can think about the audience that you are writing for when you are using newspaper articles, using bold, italics, font, and underlining to really bring your learning to life. I cannot wait to see what you get up to. And next week, there'll be another video on the website with more information on how you can move on in this particular piece of learning. I will see you in week four. Bye-bye, everyone.